and welcome back. Now today we're going to be talking about some vibratory things on the Arduino. Um, nothing to do with buzzers or anything like that. This is all about controlling the Arduino without actually having any on-off switches or at least no switches to press that might cancel an action. Now as you can see on the workbench at the moment we've got this um, rather nice little LED flashing away. This is um, one of the Christmas LEDs by the way from that uh, video from many months ago, this one here. And it's being controlled by this little thing here. Now, for those of you long enough in the tooth to remember such devices, this is what's known as a mercury switch. You can see it's a little glass tube um, with a little tiny bit of mercury in it. Now, I was convinced that these were sort of banned a little while ago, well, several years ago, in fact, because what the problem was that this mercury, of course, would eventually find its way into the environment, but apparently, no, they're still around. So this is... Um, a very simple switch and in fact I had one of these in an alarm clock that I built when I was a teenager uh, for the snooze button so you can imagine it was probably about that angle um, now imagine the LED here represents like the alarm buzzing away and you'd pick up the clock and just tilt it like that and as you can see the LED has gone off and then you set it back again and there was a 10 minute delay I think before it went off again and you just tilt it again being a teenager, of course, alarm clocks, hey, who needs them? So that was a very simple switch and very easy to use. And of course, you didn't need to actually press a snooze button on top of the clock, which is obviously difficult to find when you're half asleep and all that. So having a little mercury switch like this, eco concerns notwithstanding, um, is a very easy thing to do. Um, now, I have actually measured the resistance across there with the multimeter and it's about three ohms when that little globule of mercury well I'm assuming it's mercury maybe they've called it mercury it's something else some sort of artificial thing I don't know but uh, I've measured the resistance and it's about three ohms when that that little bit of mercury or whatever has, has gone down the bottom there um, I'd like to actually get into the macro mode just so you can really really see what that's about but uh, I'll try that in just a sec so basically this little piece of mercury ball whoops now we've pulled it out of the socket um, just floats backwards and forwards as you tilt it um, and it just makes contact with well one wire and then there's a shorter wire down the bottom so that's where it makes contact and as you can see the Arduino sketch here simply turns this off when it detects that there's a short circuit here I say short circuit three ohms that's close enough for an Arduino um, very simple it is too now, on my coffee cup coaster video, I didn't use one of these. I used something else. So let me show you that instead. But first of all, I'm going to try and get a real close up of this if my video camera allows it. So let's have a go. There we are. Now, that's, that's a pretty good shot, actually, isn't it? You can see that little ball of mercury. We'll call it mercury. I think it probably is. I don't know what else would, would be liquid at room temperature. And you can see very clearly there the short little tiny lead that's sort of cropped at the base. And then the longer lead on which the glob of mercury is now resting, look. And that just floats down, touches and makes the circuit, which is why the lamp at the back here has now gone off. And as soon as it rolls off, the LED comes back on again. So that's, that's all very simplistic, isn't it? So let's see what alternative there might be for this. And here's the alternative. Now, this looks like a capacitor, but in fact isn't. Well, I don't think we can get close enough on the writing. In fact, I don't think it even describes what it is. It's basically a tilt switch. Um, so inside here, there are two wires, much like that mercury switch, and a ball bearing instead of um, a ball of mercury. And as that runs down inside, it breaks the circuit. So once again, the LED is on. And when the ball runs back and makes that circuit in just the same way as that mercury glob, as you can see, this goes off. Now if I tap that, look, you notice the LED does flash occasionally, which means that the ball is only just on there. And I'm thinking maybe there might be a little bit of problem with switch bounce with this as well. Because, um, you know, there's a bit of vibrations there, look. And of course, this video is all about vibrations and touch and, well, detection of such things. So I'm thinking... Um, if you were to use one of these, you probably have to be careful about switch bounce in the same way as you would do 
with a standard switch. Um, and just in case you don't know, um, I've described it elsewhere, but when a, when a switch makes contact, you know, a standard on-off switch, we humans tend to think that uh, the switch simply comes down, snap, and makes contact. That's not happened. If you were to do it in ultra, ultra slow motion, any switch would come down, bounce, go up, bounce, come up, bounce like that, and then finally settle. Now, even though it might only take a, a nanosecond or even a few microseconds to bounce like that as it does it, that's more than slow enough for the Arduino to detect it. So you'll tend to get multiple pulses coming down the wire. And if your code doesn't deal with that, well, your Arduino, I think you've made the switch, broken the switch, made the switch, broken the switch, and your logic could be totally flawed. In much the same way as what's happening here at the moment, if we consider now that this is now tilted, the light's off, but if I just tap this, look, you see, so you really wouldn't want that to happen, would you? However, as a as a device to detect, to detect whether somebody is touching something of yours, um, whether it's an alarm clock, so you could tilt it from an alarm clock, of course, and then have it go back again, um, or whether it was some kind of security device where you, you had something on show, perhaps. Say this item here was on show, but you didn't want people fiddling with it. Well, if you had it like that, as soon as somebody touched this, even slightly, assuming this was all built up into a, a case or whatever, as soon as they touched it, look, and that could set off an alarm, you know, a first stage alarm, just a little tiny alarm to begin with, but as soon as it went like that, set off a full alarm, who knows? Um, multiple um, choices for you there. Um, so that's one way of detecting sort of touch and vibrations and stuff, and yeah, it's okay, but of course, if only there were a better way. Yeah, you've guessed it. There is a better way. And there's a, a bespoke vibration detector. So let's have a look at that now on a different board. And um, we'll look at the Arduino IDE as well, a new feature that appeared in 1.66 that I haven't used very much. A little bit, it's a little bit basic, but it's useful when we come to look at this sort of thing. Right, let's do that next. And here we have it, this little device here is in fact a bespoke vibration detector. Um, now it's a piezo detector in just the same ways that you can generate um, a voltage, square wave voltage, and send it to a piezo transducer and it'll make a sound. Well, similarly, if this receives vibrations, it will generate a voltage back up the two wires and you can detect them. Um, now, let me just unplug this. They say you have to be a little bit careful about um, soldering this. I'll take it out. Yeah, so that's what it looks like, it's on these two little pegs. And as you can see from the scale compared with my chubby fat fingers, um, you can see that it's it's pretty small actually. So this is the pizza bit on here. And this bit on the end, it's um, this brass thing, it's not some kind of antimatter dilithium crystal realignment. It's just a bit of brass thing on the end actually, because all it does is act like a weight so that as this starts vibrating the weight keeps it vibrating so you can detect it that's all there is to that so let me just uh, put all this back and we'll see how this hangs together right so here we have an example sketch which is simplicity itself but let's just see it in action first so if i tap this board keep your eyes on the um, debug window or serial monitor window uh, over here there you are. So as I as I tap it, you get this stream of numbers coming up because that's what it's detecting. And as you can see, the little LED at the back there, the green one, it just sort of flickers and then off again. And if I really whack it, you see the red one is now stuck on until it clears. Okay, so at least it's detecting something. And if I if I tap around the board, so on this cutting mat, you can see the numbers are still scrolling up quite happily. So it's quite sensitive. And if I do nothing it's, well, pretty stable actually. It doesn't suddenly spring into life. Now, when you connect this device to the Arduino analog input, which is what we've got down here, um, you do need to put a 100K resistor across the terminals. Um, there is talk on the internet, it might have been the forum I saw this, I don't know, about a one mega ohm, but you can't do that on an analog input. It's just not low enough. You'll get all sorts of spurious noise and stuff. Um, I mean, these these wires here alone, look, 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 as I'm touching it, you see the numbers scrolling up on the uh, debug window? They will pick up enough noise as it is. 
So I think 100k is what you need. Obviously, if the 100k was was up this end more, then it probably wouldn't pick up the noise as I touch these wires. And Lord forbid that you ever actually have any PMW wires floating around like this because it will pick them up in an instant. But 100k with this sensor is absolutely fine. That that really does work. So anyway, let's just leave that for a minute and uh, talk through the code because there's a couple of little things in here that are worth looking at. Right, so we've defined our pizza pin on A1, just analog input one. Um, got a couple of LED pins. Okay, define them as output. We'll come on to this bit in just a while. Just ignore that for now. Uh, and what we're saying here is in go and read the pizza pin. And if it's greater than zero, go and display it. I've capped it at 50 though. So if the pizza is greater than 50, then make it 50. Otherwise, we'll take the absolute value of the pizza um, vibrator down here. Now, absolute value being that we don't really care about negative values in here. So we're just ignoring those. We're just... Well, no, that's not true. We're not ignoring them. We're turning them into positive values. So if by some chance you were to get a minus one volt generated on here, we'd actually turn it into a plus one volt because it just makes your whole coding a little bit easier, isn't it, if you're talking about positive values. And then we're saying um, light up the green LED, which I've called LED pin low, low tapping, low, low effort, whatever you want to call it, and just basically flip it if it's... Oops. If it's not, if it's not already on, make it on, and if it is on, turn it off. That's what this says. Not digital read LED pin low. It's, it's a shorthand way of doing it, really. You could have said if not on, then make it on, else turn it off. But there we are. And I'm saying if it's more than ten, the value that we're reading, then do exactly the same for the red one. And that is all your code. Okay, so and that works. That works well enough. I mean, little tiny taps make the green one go on and off. And if I whack it, um, well, actually, the, the red is sort of stuck now. You know, because what it actually does is turn it on, and then turns it off the next time round. It goes over that number. But because as we've already discussed, the whole point about this particular um, device is that it's it's got a weight on the act on the end so it'll act as a, a pendulum and keep it moving so it will go through this loop several times a second well perhaps even 100 times a second depends how quickly it can um, display this to the, the bug window frankly that's the bit that's going to be slowing it down so what else have we done up here what what is this analog reference external what's all that all about well under normal circumstances your peripheral that you're going to plug into an analog port or analog pin is going to be generating voltage between 0 and 5 volts that's standard sometimes it's between 0 and 3.3 but normally 0 to 5 volts and that's what your analog port can handle but what if as in this case the voltage being generated by this is so tiny that five volts doesn't doesn't come into near to near to it yes all right you can get pulses and spikes of potentially up to 20 volts if i was to actually ping this you know actually touch this and ping it yeah i'm sure you could get a 20 volt pulse on there um, not that we want that for the arduino of course hence the 100k resistors to sort of short that out a bit and reduce it back down but we're not really talking about 20 volts, and we're not even talking about 5 volts. We're probably talking about, in normal course of events, as we're tapping it like this, you know, half a volt maybe, if you're lucky, short-lived as well. So what we're saying is we want to change the reference by which the analog pins measure things, and that's where this analog reference comes in. Now, by default, this word in the middle here would say the word default. In other words, just do what you would normally do and do nothing special but of course we don't ever write that in normally why would we bother it's, it's already doing it on this occasion though we're saying i'm going to give you an external voltage which i want you to mark as the 1023 value remember there's a 1024 value starting at zero and we're saying i'm giving you a voltage whatever that voltage is that is the top of the range of your 1024 steps so what we've done here is supply 3.3 volts in, well, one of these cables, we'll go through that in a minute, and sent a voltage back 
to the Arduino um, A ref back here um, to bring all that down, something a bit more manageable. So let's just have a, a quick look at that and measure that voltage. Right, let's put the um, let's put the multimeter on that then, and uh, see what we've got, and then we'll talk about how we did it. Um, right, let's see if I can squeeze the multimeter in here. There we are. We just about see that, can't we? Uh, right, so what we want to see is what voltage are we supplying at the back here? Um, I'll just take myself off because I can't otherwise get my head around the camera. Right, so on that pin there, which is the capacitor, and that one there, now you can just see there on the multimeter, 1.56, no, so one and a half volts, basically. So what we're supplying here on this grey cable, right from back here, is 3.3. So we've already dropped it down to 3.3 from the 5 volts, that makes it a bit more sensitive. And then we're putting it through a 1 mega ohm resistor here um, to a capacitor to ground to short out any noise and stuff like that. Just make sure it's absolutely as good as we can get it. And the white lead here goes all the way back up to the top to the um, A ref pin, as, as I say, which is, which is rarely used. And I'll just come into that. So there's at the top there, look, you can just see it says a ref okay so that's where we're putting in the external voltage now be careful when you do this don't leave it as the default and then stick a voltage on there i don't think it likes that too much and there's some warnings on the arduino website about what you can and what you can't do in case you're going to dump the entire five volts down to ground or something so just just read that instruction but as long as you've got it as x marked as external in the code as we have here and then you can put your whatever voltage you want on there. But not more than five. Can't put 10 or 12 or anything like that. No, it's got to be five down to zero and no less than zero either. OK, it won't like that. But it's it gives you a much more um, more granularity in measuring stuff. Because if we're measuring down here um, tops of a volt, or at least most of the time, you know, when we're just tapping, then it makes sense to give the A ref here a volt and say or a volt and a half and say that's what i'm expecting now there is an alternative to using this external i've tried it but it didn't work as well if you were to put internal that's not the same as saying default default is five volts and that's that's what you always get by by default if you said internal then that would mean 1.1 volt in fact let's have a look at the um, web page from the arduino website itself that explains this in a bit more detail right so this is the page that's of interest analog reference it says as we've got in our code and um, it says well, okay the default is is well the default obviously and we don't need to do anything on that that's a default of five volts now internal which we might have used is equal to 1.1 but I'll, I'll tell you now I've tried it 1.1 is actually too low. We, it's far too sensitive. You start getting a noise picked up then. Um, and that's not available on the Mega anyway. And the Mega's got 1V1 and 2V56, so 2.56 volts. But we're not using a Mega here. And external is what we're using here. Oh, look, it does say in bold there, 0 to 5 volts only. And there's a bit more information. Oh, yes, another bit on the warning. Look, see all that. Read all that. Just take care about what you're doing but we're using an external voltage because we know that our input voltage that we're measuring is much lower than the five volts that the standard would give us so by only supplying uh, 1.5 volts on the a ref pin now um, we can make this nice and sensitive otherwise it would barely register cool so far so good now, when we were talking about the tilt switch um, earlier on at the beginning of this video, um, we said that, you know, if you tap it, um, it would act a bit like a vibration switch. And that is by design. Um, I don't know what the little ball inside is made of, but it's designed to be particularly light so that when you touch it like that, you know, you whack it on the end, very gently, I might add, um, it does bounce up and down and create that sort of tilt mechanism. But it is only on off. You can't really measure intensity as such like you can with this one um, whereas the mercury ball of course is, is most definitely either on or off so we've gone through a variation there haven't we mercury is either on or off digital on or off this one could be connected 
to um, an analog input and potentially could detect more than just on or off okay but this one definitely has to be connected to the analog side so that's the difference between the three now i've absolutely no idea where i got this um, i've had it for a, quite a long time for a project that was going to do in my car but it was the car before i've got now so it just shows you how long ago that was um, to act as a vibration detector um, when the car was moving along but i never used it so i don't know where i got it from um, you can probably get this still on chinese websites and things We'll have a quick look and see what you can find. I know there's a new sort of vibration detector out as well, which might be worth just having a look up, look up on the uh, internet. So let's do that now. Right, I've just typed in that search term on Google, vibration detector Arduino. And as you can see, there's, there's one here that looks vaguely like ours from Gearbest, but that's £3.16. That, that sounds a bit expensive, doesn't it, for what it is? Considering, look, you can get an analogue um, pizza here for 170 although even that doesn't sound very cheap eBay hmm, probably not the Far East but gear best most certainly is the Far East hmm okay what else have they got oh well they got this one here this is one pound 46 and let me just get that off the screen there we are, look, 146 vibration switch now this is the new one that I've seen um, just well fairly recently not that I've been looking so let's just have a quick look at that one and see what it actually means Let's have a bigger picture. Hmm, not very really clear, is it? What it is, though, it's a tube within which there's something else that, that stands up and then wobbles about and touches the side. Um, I'd like to actually have a better view of that, a better picture. Let's have a look at that one. Hmm, not really. Let's have another look at somewhere else, shall we? Right, well I've typed in vibration as part of the sensors in eBay and you can see there's quite a few and they all look like this little tubular one. I don't think they're tilt switches either. This one is, this is a tilt switch, look, and it says vibration as well, which basically reinforces what I was saying a while ago, that it does detect vibration in its own way, more like switch bounce really. And look, you can get 10 pieces of those uh, tilt switches for 99 pence which has got to be a good deal, isn't it? Uh, what else? Have, I'm still looking for that. Ah, now this one looks like that. Not a tilt switch. No, there's no pictures on there. Ah, there we are. Now there's a good picture, look. Um, what you have is an outer shell or outer tube, and inside you've got this thing that wobbles about. And if it touches the side, I'm guessing it must make a circuit. Um, yeah, I guess so. On resistance less than 5 ohm. Well, that compares well with the 3 ohm uh, that we had for the mercury ball switch and the 0.2 ohm of my tilt switch. So there we are. That's a, an alternative, and that could be connected in much the same way. It's not quite the same, though, is it? Yes, it would detect vibration in the sense that if you were to bang whatever this thing is connected to, this middle bit would swing about and touch the side a few times but no better than the tilt switch that we used. Right let me just interrupt my own video here because I've actually acquired some of those little vibration sensors as you can see here now. Um, I only wanted a couple but you can only buy them like packs of 10 for 99 pence so I thought fine let's do it. So they're the little tubes. Um, now I would say that you have to be a little bit careful with these because as it says on the eBay page itself it says that one of these wires is very very thin and you can see look it's a little tiny filament uh, and it's easy to break uh, not that I would be so clumsy as to break one of those of course <clears throat> yes well we'll come on to that one in a minute over here so what I've actually done is soldered one onto a little bit of um, strip board and put a little header on here just so we can play about so all I've done is a sketch to say can we detect this it's an input pull up pin on pin 8 can I detect something on here now at first I thought this isn't working, something's wrong, but let's see what happens when I switch on the uh, debug window then. So there's the debug window shooting through, um, the counter's on there just so you can see that it is actually running. Now if I flick this, like we did with the tilt switch, look, I think you might have seen a zero just shoot by there, but not a lot. What you have to actually do with these is actually move this overall. I think if you shake this, look, there are now some zeros are coming up, you see that? But it's um, 
I don't know. It's, it's not the um, not the simplest thing in the world. I wouldn't have said to to program. I mean, you can see some zeros obviously shooting up past the debug window there now. But I'm having to quite violently shake this. Really, you can see it. So um, yeah, even if I bash it on my hand and things, maybe there's some something about these type of switches that um, I don't know need some different handling. I don't know. Anyway, if I just shake it, they are look. So the zeros are coming up. But that's that's quite violent compared to the tilt switch, isn't it? And I've actually taken the one that I destroyed accidentally apart. Well, taken off the cover. Um, now I'm going to get this into macro mode so that we can get really close up on here. And uh, it does look very much like the uh, picture we saw. No, I'm going to have to. Um, I'll have to get my camera zoomed in on this, and I'll be back in just a sec. Right, I think you can just about make that out now. You can see that there's a, a coil of wire around a center pin. The center pin is the, the solid one on here. And then the coil wrapping around the middle of that, which you can just about see there, look, is that little tiny thin thing that I managed to snap off. And that, so that coil goes around. So what happens is, as I shake this, that coil obviously moves because it's a, a very light filament and eventually touches the center pin. Um, but as we've discovered, you do have to whack it quite hard. Or well, not whack it. It's, I mean, it doesn't matter how hard you whack this. It doesn't seem to do anything. What what you do have to do is shake it quite hard to get those zeros to count. See, so I'm, I'm shaking that quite a bit. And then, okay, then you get the zeros. But there we are. I'd, I'd be careful. If you think this is going to act like some kind of vibration sensor or touch sensor of the sensitivity that I had with the tilt switch, you're going to be disappointed, quite frankly. Um, and I'm, I'm in two minds about this. I mean, why would you want something that's so insensitive you really have to whack it like this? What would you use it for? Robot arms, cars? I can't believe it. It's, it's too insensitive, I think. Um, anyway, at least we've covered all bases now. So we know about this. We know about the thin little wire that snaps off too easily. Um, but they are only 10 for 99p. <laughs> Perhaps that's why. <laughs> ah, anyway. Um, We've covered that. So back to the main video now, which I'm sticking this bit of video into. Okay, right. When when you think about it though, what we've got here with this vibration detector is an analog version of that. So you can go from nothing all the way up to 1023 steps. And by specifying an AREF voltage, um, then you can make it as sensitive as you want, really. Now, having tracked that value on screen in this window here that you're looking at which is the um, serial monitor or debug window whatever you want to call it it would be better in some ways if we could track that on the oscilloscope but rather than drag you all the way downstairs to this oscilloscope there's something else we can do so we're going to close down the serial monitor window like that and we're going to come up to tools now this is um, a facility that's been around since 1.66 serial plotter of course nobody uses 1.67 up to 1.611 because there was a a few bugs in the arduino ide allegedly i came across a couple i must admit it drove me mad so everybody reverted to 1.65 or 1.66 but this serial plot has been around since then and if we click that one and i'll bring it into view now what that's doing while we're waiting is trying to read stuff off the serial port just the same way as the serial monitor did it's going can i detect anything or not well if we whack this a few times oh there we are look it's coming in a bit like an oscilloscope and the y-axis that's this thing here automatically scales as well so if we just tap it a little tiny bit at the moment you can see the scale is at um, 30 but if i get all those little spikes off but by tapping it gently there we are now it's gone down to 12 look so 0 to 12 and uh, the reason why it's it stops when i stop is because the code says here look only if it's above zero do we do any serial printing if i change that to equals zero you'll see that in fact it just continues to display a bit like an oscilloscope a trace so let's upload that and you'll see what I mean. Let's bring the trace back while it's compiling. Oh, I think I managed to close it. Let's bring it back up. Nope, it's disappeared. 
This happened to me yesterday, actually, while I was trying to do something. It just disappears, and then you just think, oh, well, I'll, I'll just use the monitor now, and then you get an error. Let's, have, let's see if we get an error. Yes, we've got an error, look. Uh, it says there, Serial monitor not available while the plotter is open. Well, where is the plotter? It's disappeared off the screen. We can't find it. I'm going to have to try and um, get it back somehow. Oh, there it is. Right. So there's the serial plotter. Um, now, it should, as you can see now, it's got zero and it should be tracking everything. Yeah, look, there we are. Look, it carries on tracking stuff. So now when I touch the board, you can see the, the actual sensor values fly across the screen quite happily. Now the Y scale should reset itself again when it detects enough. There we are, look. So it's frequently enough, I think. Or There we are. I think it has to be more often than what I'm tapping it on the board here. Um, but that's basically how it works. So if I tap it nice and fast... No, you can't see it. Hang on, let me just move things about a bit. Right, so I'm tapping it. There we are. The Y scales, as you would expect. Why it suddenly shot up like that? You'd almost think it's detected some kind of negative pulse, wouldn't you? But there is no negative pulse as far as I can tell. Because I'm only plotting positive values, as we've already discussed. Now, there's something else about this serial plotter that's um, quite helpful. Um, you can have more than one trace running at a time, a bit like a dual trace oscilloscope. And the way you do that is by outputting... Oh, hang on. Benny, my cat, has uh, decided to join us because he's quite interested in serial plots and everything. Now, Benny, uh, what do you reckon we should be doing about this serial plot then? Should we, uh, should we show another one? Yeah? Yeah, I, th I think he's, he says yes. I think he, he wants definitely to see that. I can I can tell what he's thinking, obviously because he's my cat. I'm used to the way he's talking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the direction to go, Benny. That way there. That's it. Thanks for joining us, by the way. It's been been a pleasure. Right, let's just uh, get back to what I was doing. Right, so we're going to get a double trace on. Oh, he's back. Hang on, let me sort out Benny, and then I'll get the double trace working. Right, so there we have a dual trace running at the moment, one in orange, one in blue. And if I tap the board, you see that they, yes, they're obviously in sync because what I'm actually displaying is exactly the same value. But they needn't be. They could be you know, entirely different signals. But you can see we have two there, and that's a jolly useful feature. And the way you do it, if you look at the code there, is that you print your first value, then you print a space or the tab character, which is slash t, and then you print the final value, but it must be print line. That's how it knows you've finished. And what it tries to do, it interprets um, what is being output, and anything that's numeric, it will display on that screen. So if we just go back to the monitor to have a look and bring that to the front, there it is. So we tap the board again, and we have the two traces running. Um, now, I haven't actually had need to have two traces running myself, but this is a sort of a, I don't know, sounds a bit in disingenuous, doesn't it, to call it a poor man's oscilloscope, because it's actually quite good, I think, to be quite honest. It's, um, you know, you can detect pulses and things. Yeah, very good, that. Anyway, I'm hoping they're going to improve it a little bit, stop this Y trace um, automatically um, rescaling itself. I'd, rather, I'd like to be able to put in a, a maximum trace myself, then I wouldn't have to do things like this, you know, saying maximum of 50. But that's that's a minor issue, issue for me, quite honestly. And, um, well, there we are. You can play with that now. You know that it's there and what it's used for. Just remember to get this right here. You must say print a value and then a space and then print another value with a print line. Or if you're just using the one value, of course, forget all that. It's just print line, just that one as we had it before. And that will print it on this plotter quite happily. Yeah, cool. Okay then, I think we'll leave it there. That's a few things about vibrations and detections, plus a little bit about the plotter, which is always useful to know. Great, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.